This is the plaintiff, Linda Callahan. She says she purchased a used car from the defendant, and the warranty he sold her was a worthless piece of junk, and she was scammed. That's right, when her car broke down, she had a huge bill she needed to pay out of pocket. The defendant's a crook who hung up on her, and she's here suing him for every penny of the money she now needs to fix the car he unloaded on her. And pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Bob Montaneri. He says the plaintiff purchased two cars from him previously, so he threw in a pro guard warranty because he's a nice guy. When the plaintiff's car broke down, she threw an absolute hissy fit when she discovered the warranty she had didn't cover her repairs. The woman then went on a rampage. She destroyed his office, stormed out, and now here they are. He's accused of claiming something and not delivering. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she purchased the car with a warranty from the defendant, but when it broke down, guess what? He wouldn't honor it. But the defendant says the plaintiff threw a fit in his place and destroyed his office. So he doesn't want anything to do with her. It's the case of getting hot under the hood. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Callahan, you bought your third car from Brooks Auto World, correct? Yes. And part of that, um, when did you buy it? July 25th is when I like of what year of 2019 okay and do you have the paperwork from that purchase yes I do may I see it of course so this is the warranty and what warranty did you buy so the warranty that um, Bob had included with the car was a pro was a pro guard three warranty for 12 months or at least until my car hit like I believe like 15 okay but I, I'm I'm trying to understand why someone marks 90 and then someone else takes a pen, marks 12, and puts one year and circles it. Yeah, so Bob made an error, and he tried to fix it with the pen. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have yeah. Um, When people make an error on a contract, they put their initials next to it, or they start over. Yeah, he didn't start over. He didn't put his initials there. He just like, oh, I'm sorry, and he fixed it. And then, you know, we just signed it. I mean... Yeah, but you know how it looks now, right? Yeah, of course. Right. How long was her warranty supposed to be for? One year, 14,500 miles. Which warranty was she supposed to get? Well, I'll explain. When she or anyone comes into my dealership, the Lemon Law warranty is 1,000 miles, 30 days, doesn't really cover so much. And people, when they buy used cars, my lot, I sell cars from 10,000 on down, and it's a used car. So I give everybody, and I don't mean I bill it in the price, I give, I pay. Well, if, if that's the incentive for nope. people to buy, it's kind of billed in the price, but okay. okay. No money out of her pocket or right. any of my customer's pocket. And so what I do is I give them a ProGuard 3 warranty. There's ProGuard 1 through 5. The higher the number, the more the coverage, but some of the higher numbers you don't need the coverage because... It's not okay, a diesel, but, but it's you not digress. A so, what did you give to her as part of her deal? What did you? A one-year warranty. One-year warranty. One. Pro guard what? One. Well, why then does she have a piece of paper that only you could give her that says Pro Guard Three? Well, if you look at that, judges for ninety days. It's not a. It's not. Okay, a that's a different three. question than what I'm asking you. Okay. What's marked is is ProGuard 3, not ProGuard 1. Okay. All right, so explain to me then what you're trying to say to me. Every customer that buys a car from us gets a ProGuard 3 90-day warranty. Okay. Everybody gets it. Well, then, but, but do you understand that there's a conflict in your own testimony? If everyone gets a ProGuard 3, why are you saying that, you, that she got a ProGuard 1? Well, they get a ProGuard 3 for 90 days. Okay. She got a ProGuard 1 for 12 months. That okay, does she pay cost. for that? Stop a second. Does she pay for that? No. The ProGuard won for 12 months. Does she pay for that? She did not pay a dime for that warranty. So that, what is it that you included in the deal? A ProGuard won for 12 months? Correct. Yes. And then she also, so she'll get conflicting right. paperwork, one that says no. she had, well, how does she have that? Right. And Wait, what? don't talk. Well, how does she have this? Okay. My title clerk, when she bills out a deal, it's automatic, Judge, that she makes a 90-day ProGuard 3 warranty. Every customer of mine gets it. 
when Mrs. Callahan came in to look at her third car for me, she was a little apprehensive because the car had- Can you not digress and just answer what I'm asking? I'm I, I, look, this is a contracts case. I see right. a contract for 90 days, and then I see somebody took a pen and wrote one year and 12 months. That's the right. ProGuard 3. Do you have a different contract with their signature that says ProGuard 1 for 12 months? My title clerk made the warranty that I believe you would have in your hand. Linda picks up the car in the evening. My title clerk is not there. She's part-time. The following day, when all these contracts are paid online, and I have a one-year ProGuard 1 contract unsigned because she picked up the car, and she states that she mailed out a Show me the proof the that you gave her a ProGuard 3, too. I guess what you're saying is I gave her both because that doesn't make any sense to me that you would pay for both running at the same yeah. time. Judge, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you the best I can. Well, Everybody let me explain to you what my problem is. Here's what my problem is. You aren't my first rodeo. I have cases every day against used car companies. Mm -hmm. Some used car companies are providing a service that where people wouldn't be driving if it weren't for the used car company because she can't go to Lexus and buy a car. She buys her cars used from you. OK, so that's marvelous. So some used car companies are fantastic and some aren't. Some do this. Some tell the customer, buy the car, you're getting a great warranty. And then they turn around, they don't even forward the money to the warranty company. Exactly. And then the customer doesn't get a warranty. Mm -hmm. Or some are careless and make a mistake and mark ProGuard 1 instead of ProGuard 3 when that's what they're supposed to be giving them because that's what I have a signature saying she's going to get. Or some are really good and made a mistake and it's the warranties company's fault. Or that side is greedy and they want something covered they're not supposed to get covered. I'm trying to figure out which category this case falls into. So I have a very specific question. I know exactly where I'm going because I've been doing this a long, long time. So I am asking you the following question. This customer goes in there. You make a sale. Your answer to me is, Judge, everybody automatically gets 90 days on ProGuard 3. So that's what we gave her. That's why her signature is on there. But now you're telling me that at the same time that this is going on, there's another one that she bought for 12 months in ProGuard 1. So that raises all kinds of questions in my head. Like, why would you ever pay for two warranties to run at the same time? One. Two. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Two, <laughs> I want to know that you actually paid for something. So I want to see the proof of whatever you sent that company. I want to see if you're trying to feed me the following. Mm -hmm. Oh, judge, I automatically give everybody this warranty, and then I also gave her this warranty that runs at the same. I want to see how out of your pocket you paid for a ProGuard 3 for 90 days and a ProGuard 1 for a year. If that's what you're telling me happened, then prove it to me. Okay, I am telling you that that Good, now prove it to me, right. don't talk. I don't want to see, I don't want to hear flapping gums, I want the proof. So show me the proof that you paid for both warranties. I did not pay for her first warranty because we gave her the 12 month, 90 day. Oh, and, so and then this is what happened. Yeah. You are not someone that automatically gave her a 90 day warranty. You are somebody that accidentally gave her one because she has the paperwork. Then you didn't mean to give that to her. How, did you ever give her the one you meant to give to her? You didn't even yeah. give her. Mm -mm. How did you Contract give it to right her? Mm -mm. How did you stop? How did you give it to her? The following day when my title clerk came in, we, she printed up a one-year contract. Is her signature it on, on it? No, she never came in. Okay, you do know that we have fax machines, scanners. Oh, it, well, we... Right. We like, you wouldn't it. be here had, had you done that and yeah. not given out this. Yeah. Why did you give out this if you never intended yeah. for her to have the, the ProGuard 3? You know, Judge, it's very important. A three-month ProGuard 3 cost me $220. A one-year ProGuard 1 cost me $345. It's not like I'm beating her. Okay. This thing costs 50% more because I told her I'd give her a year. Right, You're making it sound like she's not getting what I promised no, her. What I, I no, 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 wait, hold on. Okay. The crux is exactly the last thing you said. I'm making it sound like she didn't get what she bargained for. 
the problem that we're ha- listen to me. Oh, the I'm problem that well. we're having is that you gave her anything with the word ProGuard three on it, and it's the only thing she got. The only thing she got was ProGuard three ninety days with that signature. Okay, right. so. I hear what you are saying. Do you understand that that causes you this problem? This carelessness in the paperwork is causing you this problem. Why would you release this paper to her with 90 days <coughs> and her signature? If she picks up, when does she sign this? You're blaming it on the clerk not being there, but this gets written up and she signs it. So how did she sign it? When she bills the car out for delivery. Who's she? My title clerk. Okay. Uh, she prints a warranty. If a car, some cars aren't even eligible. Sir, for listen to so the question. Listen to the question. Sure. When does her signature get on there? Physically when describe put, what's going on when she signs it. When she's sitting there, there's probably more than 20 documents that she has to sign. Who's giving her the documents? Me. Ah. Oh, so you're the guy who handed her a piece of paper to sign telling her that she had PG3. Yeah, I For did. 90 days? Yes. Okay, but then she didn't have PG-3 for 90 days. That's correct. Okay, so you screwed up. I got it now. All right, and then you gave her what you say you told her you would give her, which is PG-1. Correct. Okay, now, do, do you have anything that says what a ProGuard 3 covers versus what a ProGuard 1 covers? Um, yeah, if you look on the ProGuard warranty paper, like literally the next page, it breaks down one and it breaks down two. Judge, I have their brochure. It's much easier to read than the contract. Thank you. There is your one, two, three. If I were to contact the warranty company, what would they say you purchased? Just the one-year warranty ProGuard 1? Correct. Okay. Have you ever, by the way, had this um, service contract? You bought it on your prior cars? Um, no, I didn't. I actually purchased two other cars from him, and the cars that I purchased, they didn't have as high as mileage as the truck had. Well, the, the 2008 Ford had, so that's why he gave me the so-called you, warranty anyway. And, and so tell me the discussion that, according to you, takes place between these two parties regarding the warranty. Does he actually use the words PG-3 or PG-1 or no? He, he actually used the words PG-3. Like, um, honestly, the clerk was there the whole time. She sits behind him. So she was there the whole time. She was there while he was explaining it to me and my family. Is there any came. documentation on the PG-1 for a year that's signed by her? The answer is no, right? Um, Correct. I didn't even know I had PG-1 until my car broke down and I called the, P- the um, pro guard people to see, like, you know, why my car not getting covered? Because the pet boys that I took my car to, they told me, like, nothing couldn't get covered. I'm like, why I got this warranty? So I just called. They said, well, your warranty people saying you're not covered. So I called the um, warranty when people. When did you call the warranty? Um, I called the warranty people maybe, like, uh, December, I want to say, like, December 13th, okay. Which maybe. is well beyond the 90 days that you have a right to think this because you can't just doctor up a contract and say, well, by the way, let me just show you this. Is that your circling and your writing of one year? Is that what you're saying, that he did that? Yes, he did do that. Because he told me I Hold had on. it. Does that look like your handwriting? I, I can't confirm it. It's my handwriting. Can you not. confirm I mean, it's, it's not? It's a circle and it says one year. My signature's not on here at all. No, I know, because there's no place for your signature. I'm just asking you because well, like, I would... Books Whose signature is there? It's not a signature, it's a stamp. This is all right, done right. online. So when you're, no, but right. Well, what's done on, that paper's not done online. The ordering of the warranty is done online. Correct. What I'm asking you here, it just sounds like, like maybe you made a mistake, but there's a mistake she relied on. So what I'm trying to understand here is, because I would know if I, if, if I circled something and I wrote something down, I recognize my handwriting. I'd like you to take a look and tell me if that's your handwriting. I, Judge, it's a circle. I can't Not tell. Not the circle, the handwriting that says one year. Do you see where it is or do you want my bailiff to point to Oh, no, I can see it fine. I mean, it's a box checked. You're asking no, me, did I check the I box? I am not. Will my bailiff please point to the words one year? Okay. Does that look like your handwriting? No. Okay. No. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff bought a car from the defendant with a warranty, broke down, and she says you won't honor it. And there's a confusion because she thinks she's under a one-year warranty. He says it's only 90 days because of some mess up with the paperwork. Let's go back into the courtroom. So we have a couple things going on here. When someone, if you see a mistake like this, which you claim you saw and then he changed it and all that, if you don't want it to look like you doctored something up, Mm -hmm. then initials need to go on the side. Have you ever seen that in Um, a contract? 
where yeah. people sign because there's a change and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what you, or you need to say, wait, 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 wait. This isn't what we talked about. It says 90 days. Yeah, actually, that's what I did say. And then that's why he circled. Watch this. Did you say, did she say that to you? No. Okay. See, but do you see how, <laughs> right. So either he's a liar yeah. or you're a liar. No. You, you see, and then when you go to court, how long have I known you? Just met you. Right. How long have I known him? <laughs> so if someone's going to change a contract, you would never, and I don't think, I have to be honest with you. I'm not 100% convinced that, that you are naive enough to accept something that's marked wrong with just a handwriting on it. So we know you hand her this when she's buying the car. I'm concerned that this may be your handwriting that says one year because A, she testifies it is, but B, stop talking. You don't hear me in the middle of a sentence, but B, the E's are like a three backwards. And when I look at the document that you said, yes, I filled that out, your E's are like a three backwards. Not everybody does that, but lots of people do that. The R doesn't completely hook sometimes in this document. Sometimes it does, but there's several R's that aren't completely hooked. I don't know. I think that, you know, the real question here is who does the tie go to, you know? Because when there's a discrepancy in a contract is called against the drafter, you know what I'm saying? I know for a fact that you handed her this document. Do you, ha you say that the only document with her signature is this one? Well, Do I have, no, there's plenty others. Okay, here's what I want. I want anything in your possession that says ProGuard. There's nothing, in fact, you have a copy of the sales order. There's no, it, there's a whole list of things that are on the car, like when she drove the car. The hatch wouldn't latch and okay, there's a number of Okay, but don't digress items. again. What, what, are, what are you trying to say? Just get okay. to the point. What yeah, I'm what? trying to say is I gave her, there wouldn't be a, a contract on the sales order. I gave her the one year warranty. Did you tell her gave. that? Listen to me. Did you tell her that, that you would be including a one year warranty before she bought the car? I, I did because okay, she Okay, then please, the you need to understand that regardless of the fact that if somebody throws in something and that is an incentive for me to buy something, you don't get to wriggle out of it later. OK, if you got me to buy the car by telling me I'm going to give you a warranty, then you don't get to say, but I gave her the warranty. So now I don't have to give it to her. No, that's not how it works. The real question is, what warranty did you two negotiate? So I don't know. So let's put to aside the 90 day. Your real problems happen five months later. What mm -hmm. happens five months later? So um, in December, I'm just like regularly coming from work. My car overheats and it's just like overheating, smoking and everything. So I'm like, okay, it automatically shut off. I mean, once it overheated. So I'm like, okay, something wrong with the car. So, you know, I try to like do my way of trying to fix it. Maybe it need oil. Maybe it need this, but it didn't need none of that. So I mean, it still didn't start up like even when I was putting the fuse in it. So I just like... um you know, in the back of my mind, I knew I had a warranty. So I just was like, let me call my warranty and see what we can do. So they just started off by saying, you know, just take it to a, um, just take it to one of our shops so we could just get it looked at. So I'm like, okay. And that's what I did. I took it to the Pet Boys. They uh, looked at it. They I have told a me question for you. Is this your signature on the bottom of this? Um... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Then they just told me that I had, like, they, then they told me what was all wrong with my um, vehicle. Like, I had a water pump problem. They told me, like, you know, we go through yes. them. Okay, hand that back it, to them. It's uh -huh. my warrant. It's they my say signature. we go through, we go through. Um, who fills out, just a second, who fills out the top part? I fill that all okay, out got completely. It. Go ahead. Go on. So then they called, they called the warranty and the warranty people told me that told them that I wasn't covered. So I got the call back saying that. Um, I OK, wasn't you're telling me so much more than I need to hear. Can you just oh, answer sorry. the following question for mm -hmm. me? Have you fixed the car? No. What are you doing? You've spent thirteen hundred dollars in car rental instead uh, of just paying nineteen hundred dollars and fixing the car and then suing them for the nineteen hundred. I'm sorry. I don't have nineteen hundred dollars to just. Well, you apparently you have thirteen hundred dollars because, according to you, you've spent that on car rental. Do you yeah. have proof that you've paid that on car rental? Yeah, I do. Um, I pay rental weekly, so I was just was I get paid weekly, so I was just getting a rental. I mean, show so me I the paperwork for your car rental. And that's the rental papers. So I spent a total of thirteen hundred, maybe fourteen hundred dollars on a rental car. Um. I honestly, I was just like, do you have any document that says that you have a ProGuard three for a year other than this one? 
I'm going to have witness statements that was there with me the day that I yeah, went. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Okay, yeah, I have two. Two of my um, family members came with me. Who said what? My my mom came with me and my uh, friend, just like my coworker that I work with, he came with me and they basically was there when Bob was explaining um, like what I had. He, they was there when I got in the car and test drove it the same day. And what do they um, say he said? So basically they saying the same thing, that he uh, broke down the warranty to us. He broke down the ProGuard 3 warranty to us. You know, I made the little several complaints about the um, mileage being higher than he told me the pet hair the handle and stuff like that um honestly they even said that he made the error and he corrected it too so i wasn't the only person that's saying that he made that error and he corrected it so and who are these people who is that's my mother i got a note from your mother I mean, that's the thing. You don't go with strangers to yeah. buy the car. You go with, you know, people you know. So, yeah. Were there people with her when she bought, purchased the car? No. <clears throat> I thought we were telling the truth. I'm trying to imagine if there are any relatives that I could go with to a car purchase that would remember with this specificity exactly what my warranty would cover. Yeah, so the friend, he actually um, owned his own little car lot. So that's why I really brought him there. Why didn't you buy it from him? Because he didn't have nothing good. <laughs> like, you know what I, mean? I like driving in fancy cars, and he didn't have nothing fancy for me. The total purchase price of the car is 7500 mm -hmm. And then plus financing, or no? No, I think... Did you finance it or no? Yeah, I financed it. On your own or through them? No, through Bob. Okay. So here's what we know. We know that when you're sitting there buying this car and signing paperwork, he hands you a document that says PG3. Yes. We also know for a fact that that same document, when it came out of the printer, said 90 days. Correct. The part that is in question is that it now also has a mark that says 12 months and then it says one year next to it. And so what thinking minds want to know is did you write that or did he write that? Yeah. That's not an invitation to speak. That's what thinking minds want to know because if you wrote it, then that should count against you because A, you'd be lying to me um, and B, you know, it, it's kind of weird that, this, that the initials aren't there. That's what's done. But maybe you don't know that. I don't know. If he wrote it, then he's trying to get you to buy a car by talking about how great a warranty is. And then he's saving himself some bucks by only throwing in not the great one, but the one that wouldn't cover everything that happened to you. I now know that everything that happened to her would have been covered had he bought the three for a year. Okay. But what he bought was the one for a year. Now, his answer to me is, but I'm throwing that in anyway, so it doesn't cost her anything, so she's not entitled to rely on that. No. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, then you got to do it. If that is part of their inducing them to spend $7,500 plus, you know, whatever you're spending on financing that could probably potentially double that. So the question is then, what did you tell her that day? What was she going to get? She has affidavits from two people who are close to her, obviously, because they're there buying a car with her, who claim to have all kinds of intimate knowledge about exactly what it is. I don't know if they had that intimate knowledge or not, or if you know they know what the problem is, so they're beefing it up so she could make her case sound great. I do know this. This isn't a case where your side is saying, what are you talking about? She only had a 90-day warranty. And then she marks 12 months and she marks a year. This is a case where your side is agreeing she's supposed to have a year. And this accidentally was given to her. But I didn't write one year and correct the 90 days, Judge. I show you the handwriting. You say, I can't say that. I can't tell you if that's my handwriting. I got to tell you. I would know if something was my handwriting or not. I would know. I look at the E's, which are a backwards three, which is kind of unique, and I have documents with her handwriting where her E's aren't like that. I do have a document with your handwriting where your E's are. So this isn't a criminal case where she has to prove this beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. This is a civil case where she has to prove to me by a preponderance of the evidence that she was told she had 
a PG-3, which a document from you gives her, and a year-long deal, which a document, not only your testimony, but this writing gives her. But even your own testimony says, oh yeah, it was gonna be for a year. So the rules of construction in the law say that any ambiguity is to be construed against the drafter. That means the people who are putting the contract together. I am finding in her favor, and I am ordering you to pay her both the car rental and the car repairs for a total of $3,301.56. Now you have a question, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to know if I could still get my um, warranty for Absolutely, her I am ruling in this case that what you were sold is the better warranty. Now, I can only rule on what's in front of me. So I have word to the wise here. It would behoove you to purchase the better warranty for her and wash your hands of this. Because if something else goes wrong, and it will, of course. if you don't have the better warranty, she's just gonna sue you again. And then she's gonna show that judge the ruling in this case. What you do is up to you. I can't monitor you when you leave this courtroom, but my advice to you is to pay the difference and wash your hands of this problem. And my advice to you is if another problem arises and it's not covered for you by the warranty company, you can then sue him again and show that judge this. But I can't rule on the future. You got yeah. it? Thank All you. All right, folks, good luck. Take care. Love you, girl. Stick around because Doug's gonna be in the hallway with the litigants. So after hearing the testimony, the judge finds for the plaintiff and awards her the car repairs and the rental car, over 3,300 bucks. You at one point didn't feel the judge understood what you were trying to say, but she explained it in detail. Yeah. You think yeah. she does now? Uh, well, listen, I have a different opinion, but I've got to respect the judge and life goes on. She gets paid. Hopefully she'll have wonderful luck with the car. Okay, and all right. Well, I think you'd be a little more careful next time with your paperwork, okay? It would clarify the case. Okay. Right? Thank I mean, you. I think it would. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Good enough. You must sign a few documents. All right, Ms. Callahan, I think you're happy. Of course, I'm very happy. I just want my car fixed, you know? I'm tired of paying money on rentals. Do not go to a used dealership unless you know all the ins and the outs. Okay? Okay. Good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You. you must sign a few documents. And Harvey. Well, you know, you can make a change to a contract. That's no problem. But when you do, whether you're the business person or the customer, you should always have both parties initial it next to it so there's no misunderstanding. This is the plaintiff, Sean Jackson. He says he unknowingly rented an illegal apartment from the scamming defendant. And she had the audacity to evict him out of the street. She treated him like a criminal, which is quite ironic considering she was found to be renting a flop house by the building's department. He was wronged by the defendant and is suing her for his damages, totaling $5,000. This is the defendant, Roberta. She says she rented a basement apartment to a woman, and the plaintiff, the woman's friend, showed up one day and never left. The man claimed to be a tenant of hers when he never was. She had to call the police to get him to leave. She has no idea why this guy's suing her. He has no lease with her, and she most certainly doesn't owe him any money. She's accused of rubbing a renter the wrong way. All parties, please use your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn in. Thank you, Douglas. Sean Jackson? Yes. You are suing Roberta for $5,000. Uh, according to you, you're out more than that, but that exceeds the statutory maximum. To get your security deposit back, plus eight months of rent that you paid her that you don't feel you should have paid her. Yes. What's going on? Um, I rented a basement from the defendant. I rented a basement room from her and it was basically a cellar basement. It's illegal. It was told by the HPD and the NYC building that they're not supposed to be down. No, no tenant is supposed to be renting a home down there. How much are you paying for the basement? I was paying six fifty a month. Who else was living there? How many people? Um, it was another tenant, Omar. Was he helping you pay it? No, that was oh, another you were tenant downstairs. 50. Yes, I was right. paying my own separate six fifty. Okay, did you have the whole basement, or you were sharing? No, it was a, it was a two bedroom basement. So you had one bedroom, and and yes. Omar had yes. the other bedroom. Yes. All right. Um, and so at some point after living there for how long do you find out it's illegal? Um, we found out around July. 
I believe. I have a notice here. A first uh, officer from HPD came out and told us that he advised me, well, you shouldn't HPD be paying being rent. the housing police? Yes. I have the paper right here. He advised you not to pay rent, that it was illegal? Yes. And All right, so did be you pay July aside. rent? No. You already hadn't paid July rent. No, I was going to pay July rent. Okay, so you didn't pay rent. July, and no. then you stayed there July? And I told the defendant that I would be moving out September 1st. Oh, so you stayed there July, August? September. And then did you leave in September? Yes. Did I you did. leave the 1st? Yes, because the vacate orders is right here, and it tells us on the 9th that we had to be out anyway. All right, and you are suing for the security deposit back? Yes. Because you did not damage a place and you want it back. Yes. But why are you suing for the eight months rent back? I, I was, it was a mistake. I don't really want to sue her technically for the eight months rent. They just told me it wasn't going to take it off. But as far as deposit, I am suing for the deposit. Okay. Yes. Because you know the rent, even if it's illegal, the yeah, law know, doesn't allow since you lived it out. I understand. You don't, okay. I understand. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that part out. Yes. And then ask you, why won't you give him his security deposit back? Your Honor. I'm not familiar with this gentleman. I did not enter into an agreement with a Sean Jackson. The basement was rented to a Mindy. The first time I saw him was the Wednesday after September 9th because I got the call from Department of Buildings that a vacate order was placed on my basement property. So I went there to change the keys. All right, but wait, the vacate order was placed on your basement property when? On September 9th. He says it was July. It was placed on September 9th, the vacate order. It was Meaning people had to vacate by September 9th, but in July you knew that the housing department was on to you. In July, I did get a okay. notice from and HPD. And you know that it's an illegal apartment. You're not allowed to rent it out. And you were making 12, how much on that illegal apartment? $1,200, $1,300 a month? I did not collect any rent after the July's Yes, notice. I know. But before that, you were making $1,300 a month for how many years without having yes, the... Yes, Your Honor, it was less than a year. I was making okay. the thirteen. All right. So um, according to you, you've never met this man? Uh, first Until time. the Wednesday after... Yes, the Wednesday after when I went so to security. So are you building. testifying that he didn't give you a security deposit? I don't have any evidence or memory of him giving me any money. Okay. Uh, who do you say the basement was rented to? It was rented to a young lady named Mindy. Mindy what? I don't recall her last name. Wow, you got quite the flop house going there. Who's Mindy? Um, the tenant that lived downstairs with her boyfriend, Omar. That's what I'm talking about. And I was down there, too, from November. They so who would you well. give your rent to, her or I Mindy? I deposited in Ms. Roberta's uh, Chase account, which I have right here with all the receipts. She told me. She the one that gave me the key to come in there. But she doesn't know me today. But I... you've never met this guy before until September or whatever? She the one that called the cops on me. I have a video of her calling the cops on me. And telling was it me before September? In. It was actually before September. What day is she calling the cops on um, you? The day I was retrieving, retrieving my belongings. Yeah, but that's going to be September. Yeah, yeah. She yeah, called yeah. The, no. she do, you called, have, do you have some I evidence have, of communication have, with her or anything else? Yeah, she, before, she had a text message. Yeah. Hold on. Before September 9th? Yeah, text message right here. She was she, well, I told her I was going to place harassment charges. It's our number right here. Do they predate September 9th? Yes. Perfect. Let's see. Here's more August 9th. Here, this one more. August 9th. Oh, look at that. From Roberta. So he's got you in his phone book on August 9th, where you ask, when will you be moving? And then he responds, what date, or this may be still you, what date the city yeah, gave you to move? Yeah, those are all text messages, yes. She was, that's when I told her I was going to place harassment charges on her because she kept harassing me. So tell me how you know, have his phone, and you're texting him and all this on August 9th. Well, I didn't know his name was Sean Jackson. I oh, never knew his name. You told me you met the guy three days after, uh, the Wednesday after the... the I did. So that turn, well, I don't know how you have a guy's phone number and you do know who Mindy. he is, even if you don't remember what his name is. Because on August 9th, you're texting him about that. So I guess you do. he's not some squatter. You know who he is because you're saying in the text, I need to be able to tell the city that you're a tenant, Right. Well, what I was trying to clarify, because Mindy told me there were other people living in the basement. So I said, Mindy, provide me with the numbers of everyone that's living down there. And, and I sent the text to find out, okay, if, what's your Somebody phone Somebody gave you so a security deposit. Who gave you a security deposit? Mindy. 
Did you move in at the same time as Mindy? No, they moved in a year before me. I moved in November. They was already there. And it's your position that you gave her another security deposit? No, I never gave Mindy any money. I gave no, Roberta. No, that you gave Roberta? I gave Roberta 1300 on November. I have the receipt right here. That's Let how me much see the receipt. receipt. So when you rented the place, did you meet Roberta? Um, yeah, she came in her uh, Affinity. She drives a silver, silver Infinity. Infinity. Yes. Okay. And so she met you outside and what gave you- the property with the, with, as well with the uh, real estate. She works with a real estate broker. I paid him and I paid her. What, you paid the broker? Yes, I paid her to, broker to get in. That's her friend. That's who she works with. Is the with. broker That's your friend? That's who she gets tennis from too. I have His a name broker. is Bezu. <laughs> don't. I guess yeah. he wants to answer my questions. Uh, I have a broker. And He's did your broker bring him? Yes, I that's don't what recall. Me about. Okay, what is wrong with your brain cells? Because I need them to all hold hands right now. You come into court, looked me in the eye and say, I don't know who this guy is. Essentially, I have no idea who this guy is. And now I find out that you're yeah, the one who yeah, rented bro. him, not Mindy, and yeah, that you had a broker and that he paid a broker fee and that you met him outside and gave him the keys? I did not meet him outside to give him any keys to my property. <laughs> did you have a friend who's a broker who rented to him? I have a broker, he's not a friend, and he certainly finds tenants for me. I do. Is this one of the people he found you? I don't recall. <coughs> well, we're, we're gonna try to do something to jog your memory, woman, because it's a little distasteful that you have such selective memory. Yeah, now I'm sorry. seeing money orders, he's certainly got money orders for 1300, which would be exactly double the rent, and he certainly paid them to someone with money orders you don't know. It's her, her account ends at three, five. I have Chase receipts. They all in there. Let, let me see the other stuff. Let me see, let me see it, baby. Let me see it. Because I'm, I'm getting, I cannot tell you how excited I'm getting. <laughs> how was the Thank actual you, unit that the, that the housing department had to close it down? Besides being illegal, because was it a problem? The, everything was a problem. Roaches, Ooh. floods. More manipulative bugs, uh, mice running through the ceiling, heating problems. Why just problems. stay? Um, I didn't have nowhere else to go. I was homeless and I didn't get a lease from her, so I returned back homeless again. And she just didn't do nothing right from the beginning. What's this a picture of? A video What's, of? Uh, videos, I have videos of leaks, videos of things crawling, everything. Like I had a circuit, I almost woke up with a fire because I only had one circuit working in my house. Is this a ceiling I'm looking at? Yes, that's a, the cell assist. I'm in a cellar. This is the ceiling, that's leaks, everything. I dealt with that numerous times. That's why I have so many leak videos. She never came and replaced one. Just patched it up, little uh, uh, patched work. That's all she did. She did this to every tenant. She overcrowded the house. She made rooms out of no room. She turned the dining room and the kitchen into rooms. I woke up with feces in my, uh, Shower. How, oh, because it backed up? Yeah, feces in my shower, the pee in my shower, numerous things. Couldn't take a shower a couple of days. Who called for the inspection? I have no clue. That's oh, why I feel uh, like you she- You should have been the one who called. I, that's why I feel like she takes it out on me because- Oh, that's the water that came from the ceiling. I was just showing how much water it was getting collected, how much it was doing, you know? He's just showing that he has- I, 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 Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So should a tenant be allowed to rent an illegal slum if he wants to or she wants to um, to save money? What do you say? Um, it's a tough one. I mean, not if it's not fair living condition. It isn't. Let's say it's not, but the tenant wants it. What do you say? I'd say no, because maybe they could possibly lead to maybe an unsafe condition, and then it could get out of control from Fair there. point. Fair point. Um, it leads to unhealthy uh, lifestyle, including the fact that it shows that probably the, the landlord doesn't is not interested in cleaning it up itself. Himself. Maybe so. That's a good point. Kind of a disincentive to fixing it. Going inside the courtroom. Can I hear from you? <laughs> <clears throat> Because you look like a slumlord right now. Like a vicious, illegal slumlord. Because you're not only renting this place out, but you're renting it out in that condition. So talk to me, defend yourself. Your Honor, I'm not sure what property that is that he's showing a video on. All I can say is that You've on never met him before September, and that's not your problem? No, Your Honor. On September 13th, this gentleman was still on my premises despite a vacate order. Wow. And I had to contact the police you to remove him. You think that's the greater sin? 
You think him still being there for three days, if that's true, or nine days, or whatever it is, you think that's the great sin we're looking at right now, as opposed to that you would allow a fellow human being to live in this filth that you don't have a legal right to rent out anyway, just so you could make more money? You think that's the greater sin? Your Honor. I need to stop hearing your voice. I can't hear your voice for another second. You are despicable. And you know what? Not only are you going to get your security deposit back, I know you gave up. You told me, it's right, fine, fine. The rent that I paid, no, you shouldn't have to live like that. So I'm going to order her to pay you back one month's rent for having to live like that. So you're going to get $1,300. Thank you. That is my judgment. Thank pay you. the man. So the plaintiff gets $1,300 back. Roberta, the defendant's coming out of the courtroom. Were you worried about losing? Well, you know, it's unfortunate that they have a recording of an unknown property. I certainly don't keep my properties in such a manner. But if But you're claiming that wasn't your house? No, I don't believe it was from my property. Did you ever go in there and look? I mean, come on, why do you think he went around some other house finding that? I can imagine someone paying rent and still living under those conditions if it were I true. I can't either, neither can the judge. Yeah. So bottom line. Is that your place or not? You're, you're claiming it wasn't your place. I don't know what place that what was in the video. Know? I what know what my don't? place looks like. It certainly didn't look like that. Well, apparently it does. That's what we all think. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Kind of lame excuse. I don't know. Mr. Jackson, she's saying that's not your where you were saying. She can say whatever she wants. We know what's going on. Yeah. That's her place. I and mean, by the judge, we good today. I can't believe you stayed there. You know, I mean, circumstances when you, when, and everything. You I need know. a place to stay. I'd rather be there in the street. No question. Well, look, thank congratulations. You. Okay. Thank things you. going better now? Yes, things definitely okay, going good. better. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hmm. Harvey? Okay, Doug, the fact is a tenant, even if a tenant says, I want to rent that slum, landlords can't do it. Apartments have to be legal. And the fact is this tenant didn't want a slum. This is the plaintiff, Michael Daniels. He says he rented an apartment in a house the defendant told him she owned, but he later found out she didn't. The kitchen didn't have appliances in it either, and he decided to move out because too many things seemed fishy. Now he's having a heck of a time getting his rent returned and his security, so he's suing the fake landlord here and now for the $2,000 he's owed. is the defendant, Shanika Dean. She says the plaintiff's a complete liar because she let him stay for free at her husband's house until he could find a place of his own. In fact, that guy's a squatter. She's trying to get him out at this very moment. He never gave her a penny for rent or security. He's a scammer, and she knows that judge is going to see through his lies today. She's accused of pretending to own a house. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant is a fake landlord renting a place she didn't even own. But the defendant says the plaintiff is a squatter. It's the case of squatter. He hardly knew her. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. In. Michael Daniels, you are suing Shanika Dean for $2,000 that you want returned to you in rent, security deposit, and, a, and money you say you fronted her for appliances because according to you, she's not even your landlord. What's going on? I met Shalika Dean um, about a year or so ago. I was living in Canarsie. I invited to a barbecue and she told me that this is a small studio. You, you deserve better than this. I got a one bedroom apartment for you. So I decided to move in. When I moved in, I gave her month's security, month's rent. Uh, about two weeks later. Do you have a receipt for that? No, I don't. Do you have a lease? No, I don't. I didn't have a lease. Do you have any text between you and her from yes. back then? Yes, I have text stating that uh, she received $500 from me and she supposed to buy me a stove. Here's a receipt for the stove. Okay, can she I see the delivered. text? Can I see the text you just mentioned? Yes. So according to you, you paid her $1,500 in first month's? Security of first month rent. Okay, and did you live there that first month? Yes. Okay, how long have you lived there? I lived there since February. Are you still living there? Yes. Oh, you haven't left? No. Okay. She kicked in my door twice. I have documentation stating that it, it was off, it's off the hinges as we speak. Monday morning, Monday afternoon, I received um, 
telephone call stating that she kicked in my door. When I got there, two police cars was there. I had damage to my door as we speak. It's off the hinges now. But I want to show you the documentation that she don't own the property. Okay, first I, I want to see the text where, uh, that you mentioned you had. I'd like to see the that. Text. You want to see the text, okay. Can I ask you in the meantime, what's going on? Did you rent this place to him? He's straight lying. I was helping him. He didn't have a place to live. Yes, he posted gave me rent, but he's living in there, not paying rent, changing locks. So did he I, ever pay you that first month's rent? No, he did security not. Deposit? He's lying. He's lying. How, did he didn't you, even have any money. Did you let him move in without paying? you anything? Yes, I did. But he's supposed to pay you rent? Yes, he said that he was going to give it to me, but he changed the locks on me and I couldn't get it. I need you to find the text, not look, at, stare her down. Find the text. I need to see that. Say that again. He changed the locks on me so I wasn't able to get in the building. They kept calling the cops on me to try you to You weren't able me. to get in the building. Yes. Hold on one second. <laughs> Describe the building. Do you live there as well? No, I used to stay there. It's my uncle's building. Mm. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Can you ask him? No, I, I, I need you not to interrupt me. Oops, is your uncle alive? Yes, he is. Does your uncle know you're here? Yes, he do. Do you own the place? No, I don't. He does. Did you ever own the place? No, I'm trying to work. We trying to get it like, you know, working on it now. for me. What does that mean? Me and my uncle, something that me and my uncle's doing. He's trying to put everything in my Is your uncle here? No, he couldn't make it today. But he knows you're here? Yes. So if I were to call him right now, he wouldn't be shocked? You're not, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get in touch with him right now. Why not? Because you're not, he's, he's, I need you to calm he's down. He's not around right now. Why is he not around? He's just not around right Where now. Where is he? He's not around right now. He's taking care of his business. What he's business? He's an old man, I don't know. What How he, old is he? 60 something, 66. Oh, he's oh. just <laughs> decrepit. It's a wonder he should be in the Smithsonian. <laughs> 66. When did you move in? February, February 1st. January. Jane. Okay, everybody be quiet for a second, please. That's interesting. So I see text from you in January. You say he's a squatter, but there's text from you in January sent where you're telling him you can't hold it for him. If you can't afford the money, I'll give you a room for 750, but you gotta give me 1500 to move in if you don't have all the money. Now give me what you got in the rest later. I'll do that for you because you're good people. Yes. Well, that sounds like you're charging him, not that you were helping him out. No, I was going to charge him. That was my intentions, but he never wanted to pay me. He Except for that you're me. telling him that's the money he has to come up with if he wants to live there because you got two other people looking at it. So it sounds like you charged him. Yeah, I was So you him. find out that she's not the landlord how? It was documentation on the steps. They opening up my see. uncle's mail. Documentation on the steps. And also this. What does on, that mean, documentation on the steps? The, it's a vacant building, so. The, I don't know what you mean. So the. A notice was posted. On the step. Open. Open. Not an envelope. Open. It was posted. Open. And no gas. Who's Muhammad? Exactly. Uh -huh. There's a lien by the tax authority on the building of of a huge amount. Did you know that? Yes, I'm working on paying it now, and I'm going down here tomorrow to How take care of it. How much do you think it is? I know that it's 23,000, but he can make payment arrangements. That's his business. That's none of Michael's business. Michael had no business to even open up his mail. Because the mail don't come that way. It comes with an envelope. Yeah, and no, it's it. bent up. For the, Number one, it's bent up. Number two, there's no hole in it from having been posted. Um, so you may be right, but I have no idea. Yeah, you kind of have no business opening up other people's mail. And this was bent. So I don't know how it is that um, you would see it, but the point is he did see it. And you don't have an affidavit from your uncle. Yes, I do. I have an affidavit with a title. Can I see it? Sorry, owned, stop. I have an affidavit with a title that he owns the building. No, I mean some authority that you would have to collect rent on it if I in fact find that you collected rent. Do you understand? Like you can't just be a stranger off the street and get tell people I have I'm a renting. power of attorney. On what? On my uncle. On all of it? On everything or limited? No. Let me see it. Yeah, let me see it. Thank you. Who's Douglas? That's me. No. <laughs> In the text. <laughs> Who's Douglas? Him. That's what he told me his name was. So you've never accepted a penny from him? Nope. Uh, here's your, your text to him. That's blank up. And you owe me over $600. Helped you many times. 
loaning let you stay here what do you do for me my bad douglas but that he was ass. talking about somebody you were else. a real friend i got your back as well some mm -hmm. brother where you i'm in the house what's your last name i'm on the phone with them legs mess up cops what happened I was ordering cable for him. He didn't have the money, so I put it in my name. He told me when he get the money, he was going to pay me for everything, for paying for the cable for him, for loaning him the $100, and pay me for the rent. Wouldn't he by then have owed you a lot more than $600? Yes, if yes he, he would have, yes. Right, so why, I'm sorry. Was there a question pending for you? So then why would you text, you owe me $600, instead of texting him, you owe me... Fifteen hundred, you know, whatever. That it text is. wasn't for him. I wasn't talking about he owed me the money. I we was talking about you somebody else. You owe me else. over six hundred dollars. I'm reading your word. Has anybody gone after you for rent though? No. Well, then she why says, would you get money back for rent in a place? Saying, Stop I'm, and listen. Why would you get money back for rent in a place you lived? What if she is right and she does have? Do you, did you find the power? Yeah, of I power? gave it to him. Okay. Are you a smoker? Yes. Man, <laughs> do you understand how much you have to smoke for this to smell like this? It's like knocking me over. <laughs> it's going to kill Excuse you, woman. Me, I'm sorry. It's going to kill you. It's not going to kill me. It's going to kill you. I'm sorry. I know. <clears throat> so you see my dilemma. Just a minute, sir. Then No, I don't see your dilemma. I see my dilemma. <laughs> this is dated like yesterday or the day before yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um... I have no idea if this is authentic or not, but this is, in fact, a, a power of attorney. Who did you go to to get this done? I know the Republican. I know the Republican. <laughs> public, not public. Um, uh, did... Um, I know the post be sealed by the court. A notary. A no, notary. No. Power of attorney doesn't have to be sealed by the court. It has to be um, notarized. Exactly. A notary. She went exactly to the place she needs to go. All right. But um, how did you get, like, in other words, who printed out this document for how did you get the document? A How'd you know what to get signed? A friend of mine. Who's a lawyer? No, she just know because she did it with her family member. Okay. Um, tell me about the appliances that he's talking about. He's talking about Shoot an me. oven. Just, I need you to keep touching it so that it doesn't go away. <laughs> Yeah. He's showing you a receipt that I text him that I brought with my own money, an yeah, oven and a refrigerator to put in the please. apartment, which is not his apartment because he was only staying, supposed to stay in a room. It's for the next door for he could put his food and stuff in it. But he changed the locks on the door. So how do I supposed to bring it? So if you continue. So what, what are, what's your plan to get him out of there? I'm trying to, I've served them a 10 day notice to quit. They said that I'm lying. I didn't get it from the courts and I did. Who Be said that you're lying? Hit the, the person, him and the, um, the person that lives downstairs. They still okay, first leave. of all, the notice to quit doesn't have to come from the court folks. It has to come from her. That so you, First you file the notice to quit, and then if you don't quit, then she gets to go to court. So it does come from her. Uh, it comes from him the computer the cops, everybody, or whatever. Everybody, because a judge is not stamped on No, the judges said. don't stamp the first notice to quit. You're wrong about that. So then, what, and then, but what, then what's your plan after that? I'm going back to court tomorrow, okay. and I'm getting an unlawful detainer. Because the ten, the 10 days have passed? Yes, yeah, it's, it's passed. It's supposed to be May 2nd. Uh, let me tell you something. If, if, if you truly have authority to, to, to handle his business, what you need to do is file a notice to evict um, and, and just say he has no right to be there. I don't want him there. He doesn't have a lease, and I, I don't want him there. Because if you, you, know, if you stick to the squatter thing, that's going to be, that's going to waste you three months. OK, thank you. You know, very that's much. insanity. I don't think the squatter thing is true. I think you did take money from him. And if you don't file a legitimate eviction as a legitimate landlord, you're going to have a problem. And, yes. and it's just more and more time is going to pass. Um, if you file a legitimate eviction, whether your position is he's paid you or he hasn't paid you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether he's paid you or not paid you. It matters that you don't want him there and he doesn't have a lease. Um, but you got to file the right notice, which is, you know, notice to evict. Yeah. And you, <laughs> Thank and, you. you know, and, it, and, and it's a third. It's it, to be really clean about it. You file a 30 day notice because you file a 30 day notice. Then he has zero right to still be there if he's not paying rent and you file a 30 day or, or a five day notice for nonpayment. Um, but the way you're doing it, you're not handling his stuff properly. If in fact you're entitled to handle his stuff properly, the court so let me, me talk it that about way. yeah because you said he's a squatter, but you know, he, um, me, Judge, then you got to prove squatting. 
And then if you fail to prove squatting, got to start Notice all over. Notice Vic. I heard what, what you said. What is saying. this right here? This is a uh, sales order. This is $500 that you say you gave for appliances. Um, according to you, did anybody give you $500 for appliances? No. So do you think somebody would give $2,000 to a landlord without getting a receipt? $2,000 in cash. Does that make sense? No, no sense. Man. I think I will spend my money in a lot of activities, not in the rent for a house. Well, but you got to pay rent. But does it make sense the landlord would would fork over two grand or the tenant without getting a receipt? Um, I'm not really sure. What do you say? I think you should get a receipt because he doesn't have any proof if he paid or no. That is the best mustache I've seen in about three years. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Very, where are you from? France. That's a French mustache. Oh, that's a French mustache. <laughs> like, wow. Okay, going inside the courtroom. According to you, do you have any proof that any, that you gave her five hundred dollars for appliances? She got the, got the receipt. Well, that ju- that doesn't show you gave her five hundred dollars for appliances. This shows that she paid Atlantic Design five hundred dollars for appliances. But right? she says she's going to deliver it to me, so that means. Well, yeah, but I- you might have to deliver it to the to you because you're supposed to rent the place with appliances. Um, did the appliances ever get delivered? No. Okay. Still not there now. Okay. Um, interesting. What are you doing for refrigeration and all that stuff? Why would you pay seven fifty for a place that doesn't have a kitchen? That's Where right. is this? Brooklyn? Yes. <laughs> it's tough. In Brooklyn, right? I thought I'd do everything possible. I'd give her the five hundred dollars and give her the fifteen hundred dollars. Why would you hand five hundred dollars to somebody, fifteen hundred dollars to somebody, and not have a receipt? She says she's a friend. We supposed yeah, to have been is, friends. I, that, those are the people I want to be able to keep as friends. Uh, you know, uh, so if I do business with a family member, which I don't, I get a receipt. If I do business with a friend, I get a receipt because I don't want to lose a friend. But no matter what, two grand, you're saying, comes out of your hand into someone's hand. You have zero proof of it. That's a, But it, I mean, it doesn't matter because as far as the rent and security, she has a right to collect rent and security. So you wouldn't get that back. And but as far as the appliances, all I need you to do is show me that you gave her five hundred dollars. She denies it. I don't frankly, to be honest with you, I don't trust either one of you. So don't don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm trusting her and not trusting you. I don't trust either one of you. Both of you will say whatever you need to say to try to advance your position. Uh, but that leaves me in the position where I either need a witness, I need a text, I need an email, I need a receipt, I need something. Because you come into court and you say, hey, I paid her $500 for appliances, I didn't get them. And the only proof you have is proof that you're supposed to, that she's supposed to bring appliances in, which is also the condition of things if She's just your landlord, which is what you say, and is supposed to provide appliances. So I'm sorry, but you don't, you just, you don't have sufficient proof to have me order her to give you back $500, um, much less the rent and the security. Verdict for the defendant. So because of lack of evidence, the plaintiff loses his case. You heard what the judge said, Mr. Dan. She can get you out, you know? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You worried? No, I'm not worried. I just find somewhere else to go. Well, you learned a valuable lesson. Oh, right? yeah. Yes. But seriously, you heard the judge said she can get you out. So okay. Take note. Okay. Yeah. Be on guard. All right. Okay. Here comes Ms. Dean. Hello. Well, Ms. Dean, you got some good advice from the judge. You know yes, that? Yes, I did. She, I mean, she reached out to you. evict. I got to write that down. Yeah, you got to make note of that. Yes. All right. Congratulations. No, thank thank you, very you very much. Okay. Good luck. Harvey? Okay, Uh, Doug, so I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible. Never, ever, 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 ever hand over money to somebody, cash, without getting a receipt.